Hello everyone. Today we're going to make an address book and it's just a simple little application that stores a bunch of different people and each person has some information you can save. It has their full name, an email address, a street address, and their birthday. And the whole point of it is it will save all this information so you don't forget it later. Um, we, you, we've all probably seen something like this on your phones. Um, but I think it would be cool to make a little desktop application. Uh, specifically, I would like something like this to remind me when someone has a birthday. I just open up the application and it immediately tells me who all has a birthday today because not everyone that I know has Facebook. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I already have a basic Windows form application started and ready to go. But before we start putting forms on our application, we need to create a class first. And in the past, we've used other people's classes, um, like the random class. We used random in a few of the episodes in this series. But remember earlier I said that we need to store a bunch of different people. And each person has different information stored inside of them that we need to save, right? The birthday, the email address, the street address. So this is a perfect time to create a class called person that has all that information stored inside. So let's go ahead and make our very first class called person. Over here in the Solution Explorer, you can right click address book and then go to add. And then at the very bottom, click class. Here, um, I'm going to rename this from class one to person. And then you just hit add right here. So notice that we've opened a new file here called person.cs. And over here in the Solution Explorer, person.cs has been added into the solution. So in here, in this class, uh, this is where we will put the variables that I talked about earlier, like the birthday and so on. And we can also put functions in here as well. But before we jump into that, we need to learn about some keywords that are vital to working with classes. And these keywords are called access modifiers. And basically, there's three main access modifiers that you'll see used a lot, and that's public, private, and protected. And basically, you will use these keywords before functions and variables to signify who can access these variables and functions, okay? So if you remember back to when we were using the random class, there was a function inside random called next, and that function was public because anyone can access that function, okay? If you're working inside of the random class, you can access the function, or if you're working outside of the random class, you can access it. But if that function was private, there's no way we could access the next function outside of the class, okay? And this is useful if you're working in groups or teams. Maybe there's some code that you're using internally to make things work, but you don't want other people to access that because it would mess up calculations or things like that. Um, if that's the case, you would use private. And protected is used for classes that inherit data from other classes, and we'll talk more about that later, okay? But the main ones for now you need to worry about are public and private. So the first thing we want to do is make this class public because we want everyone to have access to the person class, okay? So we'll type public right before class person here. Press enter. And now we can go ahead and define the variables we want all people to have in our address book. Obviously the first thing we want is a name, so let's say public string name. Press enter. Public string email, public string address, and for storing a birthday there's a different data type we can use called date time. So let's say public date time birthday. And basically date time uh, lets you store a day, a specific time, the month, and the year all into one concise variable. And finally Let's make one more string called notes. And this will just be additional notes that we want to keep about the person we're editing. Just for uh, sake of example, I'm going to make a private bool 
called private example. And later when we start making instances of our person class, I'll be able to show you guys that we can access these public variables, but you won't even see private example come up, okay? The only time we can ever use this variable, the private bool private example, is inside the person class. So if we were to come down here and make a function called like initialize, um, I could access private example here, see? Yeah, private example equals false. Um, let's go ahead and actually use this function called initialize and notice it was a public function so we can call initialize anywhere right anyone can access this function to call it let's uh, set a default name for our person so we'll say name equals new person that way whenever we create a new person in our address book they will have a default name it won't just be blank or nothing it'll say new person which looks a little nicer and let's also set our birthday to date time dot today and basically what this does is sets our birthday to literally right now so right now when I'm recording this it's August 21st our birthday would be set to August 21st at 847 a.m. Uh, 2017 because that's literally the moment that I would be creating this person this is just to set a default value we will be able to manually change the birthday from our form later on so there's two other things I want to show you guys I want to show you guys how to make a constructor and a destructor alright and constructors are called whenever you make a new instance of a class so whenever we say uh, person equals new person right that's when we would create a new person the constructor is automatically called when we are constructing that class so if you go up here and say public person this is a constructor okay and basically whatever the class is called up here if the class was called um, cat we would say public cat that's the only thing you need to know is that this word right here has to match up exactly with whatever you've named this class so like I said whenever a new person is created in code this constructor is automatically called and in here you could do different things if you wanted to you could say name equals uh, new person again or whatever right we, we could have maybe even set these variables down here in the constructor uh, however you want to do it people have different preferences sometimes people like to make initialize functions sometimes people like to initialize certain things in the constructor um, I just want to show you guys this because it's kind of essential to classes let's go ahead and just call initialize inside the constructor okay so whenever a new person is created we will automatically get a default name and birthday and then for the destructor it's similar but instead of saying public this doesn't have any keyword we'll just say uh, tilde I think that's what this is the little squiggly line person and then brackets and this is called whenever the class goes out of memory okay so if we were to set our class to null and no one else is using this class in memory basically the computer is going to automatically get rid of this class from memory and it will call this destructor to do any type of cleanup within the code okay you typically I have to say you typically don't use this but there are some rare times when you do need to use it so I just want to show you guys this just in case all right we have a little comment there and I, I don't think we've ever talked about comments either um, and comments basically are little notes that you can leave yourself in code and you can start them just by typing the two slashes like this and then anything in front of those two slashes um, are highlighted green here and whenever the code is compiled comments are basically just ignored okay you can put whatever you want inside of a comment they're just notes to you the programmer okay so that basically does it for this class we have all of the information that we want to store for each person and we have um, some default values being set 
Let's go back to our Form 1 design view. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure the Form 1 is selected and then I'm going to go to the Properties window and set the size of the window to 720 by 490 okay and this just makes a bigger form gives us more room to lay down some tools let's go to the toolbox over here and the first thing I want to do is find a group box right okay right here double click I'm going to put it on the left side right here and expand it down maybe make it just a little wider nothing too crazy and then over here in the group box one properties window I'm going to change the text from group box one to people because in this little area here we're going to have a list of all the people in our address book okay then I'm going to go back to toolbox and find a list box right here double click and it's automatically been put inside of the group box because I had that selected when I double click list box I'm going to drag this out a little bit drag it down oh and actually let's move it up just a little bit we're going to put uh, three buttons underneath of the list box for things we can do we want to either add a new person delete a person or save all of our contacts right so we'll have three buttons underneath this list box um, and actually let's go ahead and make this a little wider let's make this 250 yeah, somewhere in there. Around 250 pixels wide is what I'm looking for. And then let's make the list box a little wider too. All right, and let's go ahead and add those buttons I was talking about earlier. Double click. I'm going to bring it down here and align it to the left. I'm going to hit Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V. Yep, the three buttons fit perfectly underneath. Actually, I might bring that down just a little bit. Yep, like that. And then make this just a little taller. All right. And now we can add another group box. This one will be to the right side here. I'm going to align it like that. Make it wider. Make it the same height as the other one. and then in the properties for this group box we'll call this information because in this uh, part of the form we're going to have all of the different text boxes to change the information for each person All right. so we'll need a text box for their name their email address their street address their birthday and then some notes so let's uh, start by getting a text box I'm going to, I'll, I'll make it right here, drag it out to the far right, and then I'm going to get a label, and to the left of the text box, we'll label whatever we're typing in here, so the first one will be full name, And I'm going to click and hold left control and click both of these, okay? So basically we, we want the text box and the label to be selected. And then I'm going to hit control C, control V to make a copy paste. I'm going to do that uh, one more time. And then I'm going to change the text of the second label to say email address. And the third label will say street address. All right. For typing in this person's birthday, we'll need a special type of tool called a date time picker, I think it's called. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is, date time picker. And uh, basically, like you see here, it's a little calendar. And it will let us, uh, actually, when you click it, a calendar will come up just like the normal Windows uh, GUI does. 
and it will let the user pick a day in the calendar to set the birthday to. I'm going to control C, control V this label, align it, and I'm going to call this one birthday. And finally, I'm going to click both of these street address and the street address text box and do one more control C, control V. And down here we will have uh, our notes. All right, so notice there's actually a bunch of empty space down here. And I did that intentionally uh, to let you guys maybe expand upon this how you, however you want to, OK? Maybe there's some extra information that you think a person should store. So feel free to do that. Um, and that would be a good exercise, actually, after this video is over with to kind of test your understanding of Windows Forms, OK? And oh, it looks like we need to, OK, we need to label these buttons, too. I forgot about that. Let's click button one. And I'm going to call this one new. And whenever we click this, we'll create a new person in our list. The second button we'll call save. Whenever we hit this, we'll save out all the information in our address book so it can be loaded in later. And then the final button will be remove. And if we have selected something in the list box and we hit remove, we will remove that person from our list.